Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. As always, I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, welcome to Fit and Fire. My name is Mark. I'm glad that you're here. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, by all means, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to get notifications of all the new stuff that's going on, go ahead and hit that bell icon as well. That's the best way to support the channel, by far the best way to do it. All right, so let's jump into this video real quick. What is your NFA item of choice? Is it a suppressor? Is it SBRs? Is it class three stuff? Is it stuff that you've already purchased? Sound off in the comment section down below because that's what we're gonna be talking about, my first NFA item. Now, one of the things I'm not going to be talking about is the whole aspect of asking the permission of the government to purchase something that should be constitutionally guaranteed. That's for a different video. I don't agree with it, but it's reality. We have to go through that process. Um, well, I should say, you don't have to, you can make choices of your own, but legally you have to go through the choices. So this video, we're gonna be talking about the Sandman S uh, silencer from Dead Air and talk about the overview of this, the reasons why I decided to go ahead and purchase this particular can against all the other ones that are out there, and then kind of my experience. And I'll try to keep this as short and concise as possible. I'm gonna do a few more videos about this particular suppressor, and we'll get into those as well. But the overview on this is that the Sandman S is kind of the Goldilocks of the Sandman series of silencers from Dead Air. And I say it's the Goldilocks, and that's a personal preference, a personal perspective for what I need it to do. And we'll dive into that here. But the great thing about all of the Sandman suppressors is that they're multi-caliber cans. And by and large, for the most part, they're going to be able to suppress all calibers between 17 HMR and 300 Win Mag. I say by and large, I mean almost, I'm really talking about most of the popular uh, calibers that are out there. So this particular one, the Sandman S is going to end up being 6.8 inches long, so just under seven inches, and that's something to consider because you're going to add that length to the end of your barrel, so keep that in mind. And in addition to that, it weighs 18.5 ounces. So you're adding over a pound on the end of your firearm. So that's something that you're gonna really wanna keep in mind when choosing a suppressor is how much length and weight am I adding to the end of the rifle or pistol that you're going to be attaching it to. One of the great things about the Sandman series of suppressors is that they have a one-handed quick disconnect design. So all you have to do one-handed, you can just untorque it and unratchet it from the muzzle device and then you're able to pull it right on off. Now, the muzzle device that I chose for both my 300 Blackout, which is this my Aero Precision M4E1 in 300 Blackout, if you guys are interested in this setup, I've got a link to that video right here. But I did choose the flash hider opposed to the compensator. And I did that for a couple of different reasons, but at the end of the day, I like the idea of the flash hider. I think it looks better, in my opinion just me. But the great thing about the setup with the Sandman suppressor is you're going to get a muzzle device included with the suppressor when you purchase it. It is going to be set up for 5 8 by 24 thread pitch, but um, there are different ones that you can choose from as well. You will need to work that out with them when you order it, but uh, it will come with a muzzle device. Uh, already set up. To attach the suppressor, all you have to do is going to line up the um, index teeth on the key mount system. And it's really pretty simple. You just kind of, if you can't figure out where, where it's supposed to be, just kind of turn it until it locks in, you push it all the way down and then you turn it and lock it into position. I have had no issues with this loosening itself off, uh, loosening itself up or 
you know, propelling itself off of the muzzle device. So that's something that was really nice. So I mentioned that this is the Goldilocks of the three and the reason for that is the Sandman L is going to be the longer of the three. It's going to come in at just under nine inches, 8.9 inches and just under 22 ounces as well. And that is a lot of length and weight added to the end of a firearm. My perspective is that that is more for the precision shooters out there, the guys that are shooting, you know, 308, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6 millimeter Creedmoor, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that weight and length is then mitigated by adding bipods and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of my perspective on it. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there that are running it on AR platforms just fine. Uh, and it will suppress the report of a rifle a lot better than the Sandman S, but again, you're adding length and weight. And then you have the Sandman K, which is going to come in just under five and a half inches and weigh in right about that 13 ounces. So it's a lot shorter, it's a lot lighter, but it is not going to be able to suppress as well as the S or the L. So those are some of the decisions that you're going to need to make on which one you decide on. I chose the S because while it is a little bit longer than the K, I did want it to suppress a little bit better for my 300 Blackout or my 556 um, platforms as well. So that's kind of a quick overview of what's going on with the suppressor itself. Let's talk about the reasons why I decided to go ahead and get a suppressor. And this has nothing to do with trying to be grand thumb or trying to flex on anyone at the range or anything like that. It has two specific reasons. Number one, if you've been with the channel for any period of time, you know that I'm a veteran. And uh, you, you may not know is that I have significant hearing loss and I have tinnitus. Uh, so much so that I do get disability from the VA from it. And uh, that's not to say anything other than my hearing's pretty jacked up. So naturally I wanted to conserve my hearing as best as I can moving forward. And I also want to be able to conserve my family's hearing as well should I have to uh, defend them, myself, or my home. So that's one of the major reasons why I decided to go ahead and spend the money take the dive into purchasing a suppressor. The second reason is more for the channel itself. I wanted to be able to get a suppressor that I could use to test other gear, other rifles, uh, whether it be ARs or AKs or whatever else, um, precision rifles, whatever the case may be. And I wanted to be able to provide more data to you guys. So if I was to say buy a BCM Mark II, how well does it suppress if I were to add a dead air Sandman S to it? <clears throat> I can now provide that information to you guys uh, as, as I go through the uh, review process. So that's more information for you guys. And that's kind of the two main reasons why I decided to go ahead and get a suppressor. All right, so let's talk about the experience of purchasing a suppressor. I was really intimidated by the entire process as I started to think about going ahead and spending the money on purchasing a silencer. I'm going to talk about my experience utilizing Silencer Shop. Uh, they don't know that I'm talking about them. I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent about them. Uh, I went through them to purchase my suppressor because I heard nothing but great things about their entire process. What do I mean by that? Well, their website is set up to purchase a suppressor much like you would find a firearm on Primary Arms website or Aero Precision or Palmetto State Armory, it doesn't matter. Whatever website you purchase a firearm from, Silencer Shop has set up their system exactly the same. Now, I will say that if you are interested in purchasing one, go ahead and make sure that your FFL is set up with them. That would really help things out. But you go through, you purchase a suppressor like you would a firearm, and then uh, complete all the information that they require on the website. From there, what I would also recommend is go ahead and look at the locations near you 
of their kiosks. We'll talk about that here in just a second, but make sure you figure out where the kiosks are. Once you purchase your uh, suppressor, you're gonna to wanna to use your smartphone and download the Silencer Shop app. What that does is walk you through a lot of the um, forms that are needed by the government. You just type in your critical information, full name, address, social security number, you know, a lot of the information you'll go through, you'll be able to see, basically creating a profile in that app. You're also able to do your two by two inch passport style photo with that app as well. And once you have all of that completed, then that gets dumped into their system along with your order as well. Now that you have all of that completed, you can go and find the kiosk that is nearest to you. For me, it was a two hour drive, but I ended up making it a day trip. I went to Kansas City uh, to Centerfire uh, Range in Olathe, Kansas, and uh, I've got some friends that work there. Um, I was able to, you know, take a day trip and just make it a make it a road trip for me myself went in went to the kiosk and on the kiosk that's where you're able to do your fingerprints so you don't have to worry about going to your local police department or sheriff's department to get your fingerprints done and then mail all that stuff in silencer shop has everything set up uh, pretty much electronically for you guys and it's it's spot on you don't have to worry about anything getting lost or anything like that it's all taken care of. From there, once all of that is completed, then your order is complete. Your um, suppressor is then mailed to your FFL. You will then have to fill out a check for the ATF. It's $200 tax stamp. And one of the things that you'll find is once that check is cashed, that's kind of when your clock starts ticking as to when you're able to get your suppressor. For me, it took right under 11 months for me to get my suppressor or my tax stamp back and my suppressor in my hands. And that's a lot longer than what it should, but I did also have a government shutdown intermixed into that time as well. So, the process itself was intimidating at first, but once you started getting into it and utilizing all of the great features that Silencer Shop offers everybody, it ends up being uh, a lot easier than I expected. So I'm really happy that that's the route that I went. You can do it other ways. You can work through your FFL and all of that jazz. They should be able to get you all set up with all the different forms and everything. Uh, it is going to be a little bit more manual if you go that route. So that's why I recommend Silencer Shop. So definitely check them out. Uh, they've done good on me. So that's what I have to say about that. So We're going to be doing a lot more videos when it comes to the Sandman S. Obviously, I'm going to be putting it on some of the other stuff that I'm taking a look at. But I'm also going to do more uh, videos on this particular setup. I wanted to uh, look at the accuracy of the Faxon 300 blackout barrel that I have on here. We're gonna look at point of aim, point of impact shifts with and without the suppressor added so you guys can kind of gauge that and then uh, just kind of give you an overview of how this ends up working for, for me. So um, I'm gonna do some changes with it, but uh, by and large, it's going to be exactly this moving forward. So. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. Is Dead Air the suppressor company for you? Or do you like other companies like Griffin Armament or some of the other ones that are out there as well? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. Patreon folks, thank you for supporting the channel. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel from a monetary aspect, because realistically getting to the range and shooting rounds, it doesn't come for free. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Most of the links down in the comment section down below or the description down below is going to lead you to affiliate links. Um, it's not going to cost you anything extra. I get a small commission off of it, uh, especially over at fitandfire.com. And that would be a great way to support the channel as well. All right, guys. 
We're gonna get out of here. Thank you so much again. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.